have sexual relationships. I realize that this is something that we can hear. We'll be able to solve our problems if we get distracted by sideshows and carnival barkers. One Republican, one Democrat, and you discuss the issues that matter in today's local, state, national, and global politics. Hosted by Steve Hickson with co-hosts John Stanberry and Franklin Chancy. This is Backfire. Good morning, Cleveland. Welcome to another edition of Backfire with myself, Steve Hickson, and John Stanberry, Franklin Chancy, and Chief Engineer Daniel Brantley in the studio. Good morning, guys. Hey. Good morning. I tell you what, this news has been so bad, I just quit watching it. It's just terrible. Anything y'all want to talk about? Because I haven't been keeping up with it. I just turned everything off and said to hell. Heck with it. <laughs> how about that Titans game? I don't watch pro football anymore. Oh, well, how about that baseball game last night? <laughs> <laughs> baseball game. It was a classic. <laughs> Who played? The Colorado Rockies and the Chicago Cubs, and the Rockies won 2-1 to one in 13 innings. Mm, 13 Nine innings. of which I saw. <laughs> you, put, you put that much investment in and then quit <laughs> Uh, you know, I wanted to be fresh for you guys this morning. Fresh. <laughs> or, fresh. or I fell asleep. One yeah. <laughs> of the two. The hot news I think around town is that the they decided to fix the sewer at the jail. It's a first priority. It's pretty good first priority. Yeah. They they could have just brought in some mobile bathrooms and set them out back. Well, I tell you, every incoming sheriff really for several uh, cycles now has had to face uh, problems with the jail. And, you know, it's hard to, they have a budget. And some of these problems, you end up having to decide, do we patch it up and it holds for a few years? Or do we actually get in and try to fix the underlying cause? And some of the things by not diving in and fixing them in a real way lead to greater problems down the road well um, had it been built correctly in the first place we might not be having some of these problems <laughs> oh lord what is a renewed school anybody know i guess it's a remodeled well they got oak grove walker valley named renewed schools by the state oh uh, i don't know department of education does that mean they renewed 20, their certification? 20% 20, 20 of the public schools statewide received this honor, improving overall student academic achievement and student growth it, and student groups, whatever that it's is. It's probably a lot, of, a lot of these measures that they're, they're using now are based on improvement. Mm -hmm. I think we talked about this a little while ago. It's, it's really a not always – I don't think it's the best way to do it. I mean, I want to recognize schools that do improve. But the problem is, if you're a school, and let's say we were able to say that you were functioning at 99% of, of everything you could be doing, you don't have any room for improvement. So you don't get recognized for the really good work you're doing. If you're a school that's functioning at 75%, if you go up to 80, that's a lot of improvement. And I want you to be recognized for that. But you're still nowhere near what the school is that's doing 99% of, of efficiency. So these, some of these awards, and it's like the jail, to be honest. You're trying to do something, and everything you do has its own uh, consequences and, and repercussions. Well, so I'd say that's what that is. It's probably based on test scores and things, and if you show X amount of improvement, if you come up 5% or 10%, you get that award. This is the first year Tennessee schools were evaluated using a new statewide school ac accountability model. The mobile sc model schools look at a variety of measures, including chronic absenteeism, discipline, act performance, and 10 ready, 10 ready scores to make the determination. Uh, you know, and those are wonderful schools in the system, so I'm, I'm happy for them. I just, all of those kind of things have some downsides to some of the schools that are already performing at a higher level. County targets two I-75 projects. They're wanting six lanes. Want to go all the way to Charleston, I think, from Chattanooga instead of Chattanooga to exit 20. 
Well, I understand the the Udawal to uh, exit twenty is yeah, on the true. schedule, correct? Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. right. I just yeah. I'll start, but now they're the uh, commission is trying to put something forth to the state of Tennessee. They'd like to see it all the way to the Charleston exit, I believe. Which, you know, if I was around when they built that interstate, I hate to say this. Well, Lisa used to live right at the end of uh, Robin Hood Drive, went right up there. That's right. She rode her bicycle on the graded dirt because there wasn't an interstate. That's right. The interstate ended right there at uh, exit 25 now forever. I remember it was that way forever. Well, there have, it opened up. there have been a lot of last couple of years of really significant uh, pileups that back traffic up for miles and miles and miles up through there. So it's probably reasonable to be looking at the question of whether what the solution is. Hey, what is this? Uh, it was in the banner. Supreme Court refuses to hear abortion appeal. Are y'all familiar with any of that? I saw that headline and haven't had time to uh, actually read that. It, I would assume it's based on one of our state laws. I don't know what they're challenging, but challengers of the amendment claim that the state vote counting method was unfair. Oh, oh, that's on uh, uh, well, n- number one. I can forget how they phrased it. Amendment one. Um, those amendments are passed based on the number of people that vote in the governor's race. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, and they've been like that forever, and, and a lot of states have that. And so the uh, pro-abortion people that were against Amendment 1 uh, are complaining because they're saying that a lot of conservatives didn't vote in the governor's race that time. And what it does is if you, if you vote for Amendment 1, but you don't vote in the governor's race, proportionately you've actually increased that vote total. Does that make sense? The amendment had to get 50 plus 1 percent of the total number of votes in the governor's race. So if you vote for the amendment and you don't vote for the governor, you've actually bumped that percentage up. And so they're claiming that that's that's not fair. Basically, they lost. You know, Amendment One passed, loser. which a lot of us worked hard to to pass Amendment One. Uh, and this is more left wing sour grapes asking for the courts to intervene uh, against the will of of the people as expressed in an election. Uh, and by the way, there was it was Haslam's reelection that you know the. Part of what they're probably upset about is Haslam didn't have a hard election. He didn't have a serious challenger. Uh, he went in pretty easily. And so a lot of people said, you know, he doesn't need my vote. What's going on with the Bredesen uh, and uh, Marsha Blackburn? Marsha Blackburn. I think Race, it's right? now a turnout election. I think opinions about it are pretty well already set at this point. Not a lot of independence no. on that race. No, I changed, I changed the president voter the other day. You did, huh? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know, there's always, all the states are talking the same way on, on elections like this, that early on you have uh, some vote uh, decisions where people are kind of just looking at, at broadly. As they get closer in, they zero in on, on what they want. You'll have some people that zero in and say, I really want uh, to block. President Trump, and they'll they'll zero in and vote for Bredesen. You have people that may have said, "Hey, Bredesen was a good governor," but as they zero in, and when they see how Chuck Schumer and the Democrats in Congress have acted, and they hear things like, "As soon as we get in charge, we're going to impeach uh, Judge Kavanaugh if he's put in. We're going to impeach the president." You'll have people that'll say, "Well, I like Bredesen, but I don't want to empower that," and they'll vote for Marsha. Uh, yeah, I'm not taking a position on the race. I just think that the vast majority of voters have already made up their minds on that one. It's a question of whose voters actually turn out at this point. Well, it's also a question of what the Vichy Republicans, uh, Bob Corker uh, people do. You know, the, the reason Bredesen won in the first place is because, quite frankly, Governor Sundquist stabbed the Republican Party in the back and uh, supported Bredesen, and most of it up in Knox County to be honest. Bredesen is a Democrat, right? He is a Democrat, and he wasn't a terrible governor for a Democrat. Mm-hmm. Uh, most of what he did, the thing I had a problem with, is in the debates and in the campaign, 
he argued against all the positions that Van Hillary took, and then when he got to be governor, he did a lot of the positions Van had advocated for and he had advocated against. Now, I'll give him plenty of credit. He, he cut the roles of TenCare, which had to be done. It was going to bankrupt the state. Of course, we told him it was going to bankrupt the state right. on the front end. Yeah, that came from Clinton and Gore. But he did do that, and there is actually a, probably a reasonable argument to say that he got away with it better than a Republican could because the press always gives the Democrats cover. And so for a Democrat to do it, and he caught a lot of flack. Gordon Bonneman, you know, really went after him in, in the courts, uh, but they would have gone after a Republican much heavier. But having said that, Governor and Senator are two completely different positions, and, and when you put him in office, if you put him in office, he won't ever have to vote against a gun rights bill, he won't ever have to vote against a pro-life bill, because Chuck Schumer will be in charge of the, of the calendar, and he won't ever allow those things to come to the floor for a vote. Well, that was breathtaking. Sometimes the truth hurts. What's really, really important in this life is that all candidates at all times toe the party line. That, that's literally what's wrong with our politics now. You could say it about the Democrats if you want to, but John just said that's what's wrong with with uh, this governor or that one. He didn't toe the party line. No, I'm saying that he, he was a hypocrite. He ran against positions no, that he turned around and did. you said your own governor stabbed your party in the back. He did. Well, I don't know. Sometimes maybe people who are in office have to rise above their no, party. No, let me tell you what happened. actually do what's Go, in the best interest of the If you want to go there, I'll go there. You always say I support the Republicans. Governor Sunquist ran for re-election. I have local people that point blank, face to face, ask him if he was going to try to implement a state income tax, and he looked them in the eye and said, no, I would not do that. As soon as he got reelected, he tried to implement a state income tax, and by the way, Marsha Blackburn was one of the leaders in defeating that state income tax, and that's one of the reasons people like Bob Corker and some of the Sunquist Republican wing don't support her. Sunquist is still mad at people. That's why he stabbed Van Hillary in the back, because Van led the charge to defeat the state Again, income tax. It's towing the party line. No, it's, it's lying. It's saying you believe something, telling the voters what you're going to do, and then after you get the office, betraying that. Oh. <clears throat> well, we shall see if you employ that standard to all the Republican candidates you support this time. Well, I'll tell you one thing. I'm pretty good at employing that standard across the board, uh, Franklin. I see. We'll see about that one. President Trump is sure behind uh, Marshall. Well, it's because he'd like to be able to complete his uh, presidency and have some uh, support in Congress. And Bredesen, just by the very nature of having that D beside his name, will empower the resistance. Uh I guess I've got and folks, if you like your tax cut, you better get on the ball and support Marsha Blackburn because Bredesen has already called the tax cut immoral and is obviously in line with Nancy Pelosi to yeah. repeal it, which is the yeah. stated policy of the Democratic Party today, to yeah. repeal the yeah. tax cut. Yeah, what he said was doubling the federal deficit in a year and a half was immoral. Coming from a guy that raised taxes over a billion dollars in order to, to balance and the budget said if and if you raided the to, highway trust fund. And you fund. said if you were going to, to do those tax cuts, you should have targeted them on the middle class. That's what he said. That was the immoral side of it. So, folks, if you're listening, what he really said was, you should have gotten a bigger tax cut instead of the people who actually now, got now it. Now you didn't get a big enough tax cut. Now, let me cut. see if I got this straight, Franklin. The bottom 50% of taxpayers don't pay any income tax. How exactly are you going to give them a tax As cut? As I said, the middle you, class, John. The, the middle, middle class country. got tax cuts. You're just wrong about that. Matter of fact, yeah. every time we've cut taxes, the total revenue yes, paid by the high income people actually taxes, goes up. Every time you've cut taxes, the budget deficit has exploded. No, it hasn't, every Franklin. It has not. Time. It has not. This, oh, it has. No, it hasn't. And you can and it is a spending problem, not a taxing problem. John, the spending did not go up 
Six hundred billion dollars last year, like the deficit did. Franklin, the economy has just kicked in. We had a quarter over four percent, something your man Obama never uh, managed to achieve. And as That's that kicks in, either, over the next That's year or two, true. you will. Act That's not he true. Is the what you only said, president John. that has not had a three. Obama had a five percent quarter, quarter, not yeah, a year. What you just said. Well, uh, you qu said quarter. Quarter. I'm talking about oh, the quarter so for yeah, actually I did misspoke. Spoke. He never achieved over a three percent GDP growth. The first president since the the I think since FDR to not do that. And Jimmy Carter did it, and he was only in four years. Obama couldn't do it in eight years. This president is on track to possibly do it this year. He's He's on track to possibly do it. We have to see what the next quarters are, Franklin. Yes, that's correct. So why are you bragging about it now? Well, he has be. yet to have two for the first half of the year. His economic growth numbers don't exceed the highest Obama year. Why are you bragging at this point? Well, it could be because we hit another stock market high yesterday. Which and signed like a new, 97 signed, times while Obama was in office. We signed a new NAFTA treaty, which uh, people didn't claim he could get done. The, the Canadians buckled and gave in. The dairy, Our dairy industry is going to be yes. benefited by it. Yeah, here's what happened there. They got $70 million in new access to Canadian markets, and, we and we're paying them $78 million to reimburse them for the harm they got last year. Year well, from those programs, a net eight million dollar loss. If you had talked to any local dairymen, you'd know that they appreciate the help since they've been forced well, out of business they across would the be board appreciating, by the way this has been handled. They would be appreciating the money coming from the government to bail them out for what the, the access to Canadian to markets. That makes perfect sense. Access to Canadian markets, Franklin. Yes, a three percent increase. Three percent, John. Well, Franklin, that's better than you yes, got. Yes, it got. is, but it ain't the it ain't the greatest thing that ever happened. How come, what, what's Canada charging us now to import? Actually, what thing? They, they've also changed some of the targets for automobile makers. They've changed some of the percentages built in America to try no, and bring No, they didn't manufacture. change that. That's they a mistake. Did, Franklin. No, they changed it for the percentages built in North America, not America. Well, they've There's also, a huge difference. They've also, yeah. Franklin, they've also required that they have a certain minimum wage. That's correct, and that John. will do one of two things. It'll either bring jobs back to America or it will force Mexico, which was part of except the deal, that too, that that to raise their pay. Except that, that's right. And that when they raise the pay in Mexico, more companies will bring jobs back to America. Or they'll move them to another country, right? Franklin, there's a logistics here. You can't move them to Indonesia. It costs you too much to ship Actually, them from they Indonesia. Can. They can, but they're not going to do it because the logistics don't pay for themselves. Okay. This happens mostly in North America between Canada, America, and Mexico, and this new agreement will increase the amount of production in yes, America. Yes, it's going to it's going to increase the the pay rate in Mexico. There's no question. Which about will it. push some of the plants back to America because our workers are more skilled. Mm -hmm. If you've got to pay more, you'd rather have a more skilled worker. And by all means, start as a Democrat your, who's tied with the UAW. One. By all means, go against this new NAFTA deal, because I assure you the UAW is happy with what's happening. Well, the UAW hasn't come out and endorsed it yet, have they? Well, we'll, we'll have see. They? If they did, I'd be disappointed. Oh, okay. <clears throat> I think the UAW, if they endorse anything, it's because they're getting more. So I, I don't like if if they're endorsing, I wouldn't think it'd be a good deal. Well, well, they we'll probably will endorse it because it's it's in, it's set to bring. Now, the thing they won't like is those jobs will come to states like Tennessee that have right to work laws. They won't go back to Detroit. Well, Detroit's doing a turnaround now, isn't it? They are. What's what's causing that? Well, they well, finally the bottomed of, out. The state of Michigan has been running the city for the last two years. I know that. So the Democrat politicians that have been charged of the city for the last 50 years finally had to turn loose after they had completely decimated the economy. <laughs> President Obama's been on the road lately making speeches. What do you think? Uh, you think he ought to be criticizing the, the New president, I think Bush. I think President Bush treated him very kindly and presidential, and I don't think what he's doing is presidential. But it's part of the new norm. You know, there are no rules. There is no bottom. 
Well, there's, there's a bottom, all right, and I think the Democrats have all hit it right now. Yeah, but I've thought that before, and they found a way to go lower. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't see how you get him. Unlike the president it. mocking Dr. Ford last night. Well, Dr. Dr. Ford's story, quite frankly, is falling apart. Oh, where, John? Where? You want to know? All right. Yeah, yeah, tell us where it's She's falling got a apart. You, I'm glad you said that. Would it, be, would it be worth, with all the people lining what? up to say that Judge Kavanaugh lied in his testimony? What story does she have to start with? She has a a story about what happened to her. Okay, that's her opinion. No, it's not an opinion. No, that's her opinion. No, it's her testimony. All right, Franklin, let's, her go, let's go through this, she okay? Thinks, she thinks all this stuff happened, Franklin. Right? She's not even sure. Let's go that's through this, That's the biggest thing bad I've ever listened to. First off, in her own statement, she has said that it happened in the mid-1980s and in her late teens. She came back and readjusted that and said it was the early 1980s and she was 15. Most people wouldn't consider 15 her late teens. When she was asked about that, she couldn't explain it. She actually, in her on the lie detector polygraph statement, she actually wrote in early a summer of 80 and uh, that she was early, and then she crossed it out before she actually took the polygraph test. Uh, she also said that one of the, that. She had to uh, drive because she couldn't fly. We've now documented how, that she how, flew actually in August. How about this she one, flew to. Now, wait a minute. You ask, and I want you to well, go through this. Because she hasn't said anything I, I, yet. You got to listen. Well, I just told you that. She, she couldn't she, drive or fly. She has something to do with what yes. happened 36 years ago? Yes, Franklin. She lied. All right. Here, here's another really good one. She said that this came out in 2012 because she had been doing a remodeling project and had demanded to have, or demanded, she told her husband she needed a second door because she was so traumatized from this that she had to have an escape route. Well, you know what, Franklin? There are things called building permits. And someone has gone to the Palo Alto City Records and pulled the building permits. The renovation where she added the exterior door, the permits were pulled in 2007, over four years before she had the therapy in 2012. They were completed in 2008, including the second front door. Hang on, let me finish. She's got a friend who listed that as her business address running a therapy. So the the new door was actually put into a built-on room that her friend used as her business. Mm -hmm. On top of all of that, mm -hmm. she has also purchased a home in Malibu on the beach, and she has no second front door added there. She did pull building permits, but none of them were for a door. No door was ever added, even though she gave sworn testimony, and her friend came forward and said she told her she had to have the second door. That basically, Franklin, shows her to be a lie. Now, the polygraph test. Let me read you the question the prosecutor read her. Have you ever given tips or advice to somebody who was looking to take a polygraph test? Christine Bozzi Ford. Never. Her ex-boyfriend has now issued a sworn under penalty of perjury statement that that was not true. That she actually had a friend who was applying for a job with the FBI and the CIA had to take a polygraph test and she coached her on how to remain calm, how to take the test, how to answer the questions. That's an actual lie from her sworn deposition, Franklin. Okay. And that's the standard that you're going to work with, huh? That's more than the standard you guys are really? going well, to work with over what, what does the what, flatulent farting that, word mean. Thank you, sir. What proof has she provided uh, any, about anything she said? Well, the first thing that she's done is it's absolutely beyond ability of anyone to question that she made this allegation to her congressman before he was nominated for the Supreme Court. There's no doubt about that whatsoever. So tell us why she did that. Because his name was on the short list. His name was on the short list. Why, why pick him out then? Why just make this allegation? Well, actually, she made that statement she in was 2012. Only one, she, he, was he was the only, only one she list. knew. She made but, a statement in 2012 about him. Why did she write her congressman about him? If because this is, if this is made up story. Because she had a contact to him. Why? Why? What's the point of it, John? Why? Why would she well, do that? Because she's you, a, a liberal feminist oh, who hates right. that movement, hates our movement. Yeah, that's right. And I bet you she'll write a book. The choir boy 
is just you such a victim about, about him, it. don't you? you no, I hate, that, I hate that he showed up and told so many obvious lies that nobody could possibly believe for one minute. What and obvious then lies? Said, but I'm what, a victim. What are obvious lies, Franklin? Oh, the, oh, the, oh, this didn't mean that in my in my my yearbook. It didn't mean that in my yearbook. It didn't mean that in my yearbook. When everybody knows exactly what it meant. Actually, oh, I wasn't drinking Franklin, that much when when a lot twenty five of his true. classmates have now come out and said we were all stumbling drunk and he was a mean drunk but I still was supporting him for Supreme Court I'm not saying that but he's lying right now why is he doing that why don't he just be honest about it if he's so pristine as he claims See, to listen be. to Franklin's voice I could be voice. perfectly happy yeah. he hates I could be somebody that happy. is has worked that hard oh. to be that conservative I could be and that perfectly clean. happy with the man if he said look as a teenager, I did a lot of stupid things, and I can't believe how much we drank back then, but I didn't assault this woman. Right, let me, okay? right. That would be reasonably believable, but no, no, I wasn't doing that. Do you think the Democrats would let reasonable deal with anything anymore? I don't anymore? care what the Democrats do. Well, I do, case. Franklin, I do. Right? They need, you know, we all care right, what the on, Democrats let me, do. Let me address what Franklin just said, because it's really interesting that he said that. Because on CNN on Friday night, Liz Swisher, one of the classmates he's talking about, said almost exactly what Franklin said. Now, let me read, and you'll, you'll see how it mirrors Franklin. Right. She said if she would have stayed on the sidelines, if he had said, I drank to excess in high school, I drank to excess in college, I did some stupid things, but I never sexually assaulted anybody. That's almost word for word, paraphrasing what Franklin that's just what said. Did, that's what so did let me read Martin you his actual testimony. You know, things called facts. Here's his testimony. He said, facts. I drank beer with my friends. Sometimes I had too many beers. Sometimes others did. I liked beer. I still like beer, but I did not drink beer to the point of blacking out, and I never sexually assaulted anyone. That's almost exactly what you just said he should have said, Franklin. That's his sworn testimony. Tell me that's what not what he said when he was answering the question. Yes, yes, it was. Right, Frank, I just read it to that's you. Maybe statement. you should have paid I'm more attention. attention. I did. I did, John. That's his sworn statement. That's what Word he said. Everybody's prepared to No, that that is a quote. John, did you watch him testify? I did. And he said 97 different things. Franklin, and changed I'm going to read it to things. you again. I drank beer with my friends. Sometimes I had too many beers. Sometimes others did. I liked beer. I still here's, like beer. But I did his, not drink beer to the point of blacking out. And I Yale. never sexually assaulted anyone. Here's his classmate wait from Yale. Wait a minute. The classmate from Yale yeah. teaches school where? In North Carolina. He's a professor there. And he's a Democrat. Am I right? Yep. Okay. So? Now go ahead and read it. Now. What does that got to do it's with it? That's see, see, that's the point. You think no matter what anybody says, unless they've got their tongue stuck up Trump's rear end, that they're all liars. Franklin, well, a, here's the can fact. you understand what the truth and a lie is? Yes, I do. You can exactly. watch it. I you do. Watch I do. Man. You know what I know? I know we got a tax fraud. As a president, we got a sexual assault as a listen president. To that. That's and what you this guys is about. don't care. Oh, that's what this is about. This is about and shutting will, down. And you will accept that is, anybody that is, who says I'm mad they're because vote the way Hillary you want. Clinton didn't win. Charles that's Manson what this still is. Run as a Republican See, listen to that. For now you're Charles Manson if you support yeah. President Trump. Listen to that. You vote for Bredesen, that's what you're going to get the in truth Washington. Is, that's you what's guys get have abandoned all your principles. You'll do anything you want to support Trump. Right? You he's, know, blowing up the deficit. he's blowing up our alliances. I watched principles this whole last week, and if they're trial that y'all put this And you down. know what, Franklin? When you I make a statement, Franklin, and I read you, up. I read you direct you America, quotes. Franklin. When you make a statement and I read you direct quotes from his his testimony, you should say, "I'm sorry, I was wrong." No, what I should say is, you should tell the whole story. I read because you he the testified exact for quotes. five hours, and they and said you didn't those read all exact the quotes from that. You want me to read you the five hours? Yeah, I would love for you to do that, John. Well, maybe because didn't if know you it. did that, you'd be telling the truth. You By the way, way, not just a little it, slice of the truth. Hey, when, it works for your narrative. When he talked about what what these Democrats were trying to do to him, would that be the truth? No. You, oh, it wouldn't be. Franklin, are you bothered, perfect, Franklin, are you bothered that Justice Kagan, when she was asked uh, whether she offered her opinion on, quote, the underlying legal and constitutional issues 
related to any proposed health care legislation or the underlying legal or constitutional issues related to potential litigation resulting. She said no, even though she was a solicitor general for Obama's Justice Department. We now know through disclosed documents that she was consulted on all those. So Justice Kagan, obviously, was untruthful in her testimony. Should we be going back on her? Maybe too? you should, if that's what you can prove. Folks, if that's what you want, if you want where we're going to go back on people, we're going to pull up high school people. yearbooks and but say what only you if you're wrote in your high you. school. Franklin, we didn't ask these kinds of questions. Justice, even even we Justice didn't go back Breyer, to your high school days. And Ginsburg just last week said this was a travesty. She was not treated this way. She was treated fairly. She was one of the main lawyers working for the ACLU, and in a forum just last month she said nobody asked a single question about my work for the ACLU. I'm the person in this room, John, who has said that the entire confirmation process has Not become a political. Us. Name a Democrat that was treated this what, way. What, what, yeah. Well, if you refuse to give them a hearing at all, we did that destroy really their right. character, Franklin, and I'm sorry there is a damn difference. No, there's not a difference, John, because it was a political exercise to get the political outcome really? you wanted. Right, and Franklin. the fact you took a different route to do Fine. it doesn't make it less political. Folks, let me tell you how this works. Illinois Times uh, cartoonist put a cartoon in last week showing Kavanaugh's 10-year-old daughter praying asking God to forgive her angry, lying, alcoholic father for sexually assaulting Dr. Ford. That's a cartoon from the left that you support, Franklin. Ted Cruz's office got white powder sent to it this week. The, the White House and the Pentagon got actual rice and sent to them. The Indiana State GOP headquarters was vandalized this week. We had... And, of course, you know that... Democrats did that. Well, right? Franklin, you, right. when you add up you know, the total, else, it's always yeah. Republicans that are getting this. Yeah. It's all Democrats. You know right? anybody else that would besides the Democrats? I tell you what, folks. Anybody yeah, out there that remembers a, a radical Republican attacking a Democrat, like the congressman from West Tennessee that got run off the road by a crazy, I'm, like the shooting on the ball field where we actually had a, a U.S. Republican congressman gunned down by a liberal crazy, they're all your people, Franklin. Really? What about the guy who attacked the newspaper up there in Maryland? I tell you what, Franklin. Is that a liberal Democrat? Next week. You bring was a that list. a liberal Democrat? No, he wasn't. So you bring a list That's in. That's actually the way you, you think that. You, you think this is a ball game, list, Franklin, you? bring a list in. You think it's a we'll ball read, game, We'll you? read our list, and we'll see which one has more was evidence. The, was the guy who mowed down half of Las Vegas a liberal Democrat? Actually, he wasn't a conservative at all, Franklin. He had virtually no uh, affiliation. The boy in South Carolina that shot the church up was actually a liberal. The one who liberal. shot Gabby, Gabby Giffords up was a liberal. <laughs> There's, there's tons of liberal the guy that white to, supremacists to, out there, John. Franklin, I, bring the list next week. I'll bring you a list of, of Republicans that were attacked by liberal Do you crazy. think Kavanaugh was treated, uh, uh, do you think he was treated fair during the, the hearings, Franklin? Uh, I, I think the there was a, be, I think the was a be, that was Oh, I don't have a problem with the questions that were asked. I think I do have a problem with the way the whole process has been managed. Do you have a problem? Well, let me ask you, what was the problem with the way it was managed? I think it's a perfectly valid criticism, the fact that somebody leaked this Ford letter. Who had it? Who had it, Franklin? Well, there's three different parties. Okay, had who, it. who are the three parties? One would be her congressman's office. Right, Democrat. Liberal Democrat. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And? Which part did you not hear where I said it was a valid criticism, John? I, I just want to make sure people know who's being criticized. There was Feinstein's office. Liberal Democrat. There was the FBI group that it was sent to. No, frankly, it leaked was. before that. And there was the committee staffers. No, no, yeah. it did. It leaked before the committee got it. It leaked before Feinstein did anything with it. Okay, here's what I heard. Did There's only two people that you, could have leaked Did you listen to all the confirmation hearings? Yes, I did. Okay, then you heard the parts where four or five of the Republican senators said, I believe Senator Feinstein. Yes, Feinstein, I agree. She said, you know what? I, I, listen, that's that Republican, Republican courtesy. No, wait a minute. Two things. I, let, me, let me deal with that. Two that's things. Republican from the style. That, they said Senator Feinstein didn't release it. They didn't say Senator Feinstein's office didn't release Actually, it. And by the way. what they said was she had always been honest. She has up until this. 
point, up until she didn't get endorsed by the Democrat Party of California, and she's now kowtowing to the liberal crazies that have taken over your party. But let me address that. The, the publication that published it gave a statement defending Senator Feinstein and said it did not come from her or her office. Mm -hmm. What's interesting about it is the Democrat congresswoman that had it, they didn't mention her at all. So more than likely, this either came from a rogue staffer of Senator Feinstein or it came from the congressman. But the really bad part, Franklin, is there is a procedure in place to protect the anonymity of people coming forward. Had Senator Feinstein really cared about Dr. Ford and not being used her as a bludgeon, she would have told Senator, or Chairman Grassley about the letter. They would have turned it over to the investigators, which are bipartisan, Republican and Democrat. That is the largest funded staff in the Senate to do these investigations. They would have anonymously investigated it. Dr. Ford's name, if it hadn't, hadn't leaked, would have never come out, and the entire committee could have had six weeks to have talked to Dr. or Judge Kavanaugh about it. But your people held it and then cut Dr. Ford's throat by using her for the PR. And what did I just say, John? What did I say? Then you'll support what did Brown's I say? call for an investigation into who leaked I it. I, there's never been one time in all the years we've done this show that I said don't investigate something. There's only two people can, in this have done that, and that's you guys consistently. Can I ask for oh, a, no, let's not do can that. Can I ask for a quick investigation? Go ahead. I'd like to know Go why ahead. she never knew that they would come to her right. in California. Well, and by the way, why, why, Go ahead and it's investigate also, it. you didn't tell her that. Go ahead and it's inappropriate for them to have recommended the law firm. But guess what? I don't care if you investigate it. I'm fine but with But here's the point, Frank. Oh, the you public, guys are the ones who are always The public this needs thing. to know Why that the party it? of women cut Dr. Ford's throat you, and threw her to the wolves. If you wolves. believe the truth will set us free, investigate. We'll find Why we're from at it. it. Let's investigate who doxed the Republican None senator. None of that has During anything the, to do with whether or not no, it happened No, what it has to do with, Franklin, is that your party is only interested in destroying this presidency, and you were willing to cut Dr. Ford's throat and throw her to the wolves in order to do it. All right. We've got to take a break, but first of all, I want to say, I think Russia's uh, caused the problem. You're listening to Backfire with Steve Hickson. We'll be right back. After this. Hello, I'm Johnny Fay. And you're listening to WOOPLP, Cleveland, Tennessee. Whoop FM is a broadcasting service of the Traditional Music Resource Center, and we play America's original music. We're at the train heating and air conditioning testing facility to experience their infamous torture test firsthand. Hi, right, Gordon Kidd, this is cold. Uh, I'm surrounded by HVAC units covered in a layer of ice and snow. I get it. It's hard to stop a train. Ready for a heating and air unit that's been tested in the harshest environments possible? Stop thinking about the other guys and get a train. Call Mechanical Systems today to get your home on the road to comfort. 336-5739. Train, the most reliable heating and cooling brand. After 135 years, Hardwick Clothes, America's oldest since 1880, has delivered on our commitment to produce the finest navy blazer in America. This limited edition blazer was announced as the style winner in Garden and Guns Made in the South Awards. Crafted in Cleveland, Tennessee, we use premium Italian wool from Vitale Barbaris, custom Benberg lining, and signature gold buttons. It's available through the finest men's stores or at Hardwick.com. Want to make your Wednesday night memorable? Come to the Bald Head of Bistro where Dana Rogers plays live every Wednesday night, 6 to 8.30 p.m., live on the patio. Come enjoy delicious food cooked by the Bistro's renowned chef, Wesley True, and take in the eclectic folk sounds of Dana Rogers every Wednesday night, 6 to 8.30 p.m. Hope to see you there at the Bald Head of Bistro. Another SOS, and you're stressing, and that's the time. It's that time again. Are you more back to school or back to bills? When you need extra cash, text the word QUOTE to 55670 for a free no-obligation quote. Learn how much cash you can pre-qualify for. That's QUOTE to 55670. Get pre-qualified today. You want stuff? Looking for something sweet. 
I know you are. Bring your little sweet self to the village bake shop. Around since 1961, there ain't a bake good in the galaxy. The village bake shop can't wait for you. Bake shop. So when you're ready to treat your mouth to a taste you won't soon forget, get over to the village, village bake, bake shop, shop in the village green town center. Or give them a call at 476 5179. You dig? No dealers allowed. Jackson Catnapper, family owned and operated in Cleveland since 1933, offering the best with over 70 styles of recliners, sofas, electronic lift chairs, full living room packages. Call Mike now at 961-7239 because Jackson Catnapper now offers sales to the public every Saturday. That's right, every Saturday. From 8 in the morning to 1 in the afternoon. Or call Mike at 961-7239. Or go see him every Saturday at 1911 King Edward Avenue, just across from the main plant. Jackson Catnapper, family owned and operated in Cleveland since 1933. 961-7239. No dealers allowed. You're listening to Backfire with Steve Hickson on Woof FM. Call 423-614. 5553 to join in on the conversation. Now, back to Backfire. I was just asking a question while we were taking a break. Uh, what's the lady's name? The liar? The, the, uh, what's her name? Dr. Ford. Yeah, Dr. Ford. Why would she go upstairs to the bathroom? Anybody have an answer for that? Oh, Instead yeah. of using the bathroom on the first floor. Well, you've obviously not spent a lot of time around a lot of young ladies who value their privacy in that area tremendously more than young men do. Oh, so they go to the upstairs bathroom rather than... Uh, they go to the one away from people. <laughs> well, the, there's another problem in her testimony. She had stated in the written testimony that she remembered their laughing and she listened to them talking to people downstairs. But when she was questioned, she said she couldn't hear anybody talking downstairs. There, there are multiple holes in her testimony. What else? And I, look, I'm still not saying, I, I think something has happened to her at some point. I do too. I think, I think she's uh, just mentally just unstable. I mean, just, uh, she just didn't seem like she had all of her marbles. Well, it's pretty hard. How, how do you get asked point blank, have you ever coached anybody to take a polygraph test? And you say no. And then it turns out, yes, in fact, you have coached people to take polygraph tests. I mean, she's a psychologist, right? What does she do for a living? What, I mean, she, she very teaches, well educated. I believe. She's, she's, got, a, she's got a doctorate. Yeah. Teaches psychology. I think she has several masters. What did her, now, her friend that was running the business in her home with right. the second door right. is a specialist in, in uh, recovering memories. <laughs> There's a lot of hoes in her testimony, I think. Franklin, go ahead. You're awful quiet right now. Go ahead and say what you want to. Uh, I, what about? I, I, let's talk about the NAFTA deal. You want to talk about NAFTA a little bit? Sure. Is it good or bad for us? I think it, there are some improvements in it that I'll give the president credit for. Okay. I think that in typical Trump fashion, however, uh, it, it can't be an improvement. It has to be the greatest deal of all time when there's no evidence to support that. Well, look, I won't uh, disagree with Franklin, but the point is, Franklin, that's his personality. It that's doesn't just, make it just okay, bombast. It well, it's just his personality. Well, it's not a big deal. Well, it gets in the way of people listening to anything he's got to say. Well, you know what gets it got in Obama's way? The <laughs> I'm so damn smart. You, uh, you don't even. You shouldn't yeah. even talk back to me. Yeah. That got yeah. in people's and, way. And, and the I mean, apology. To everybody it. has a personality. I mean, first of all, the New Deal, eighty-five percent of it is NAFTA, which he says was the worst deal in the history of the world. His words, not mine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then we did the Trans-Pacific Partnership, and about half of that remaining 15% was actually in that, which he repealed. So we went back from negotiating from 92% to 85%, and then he's got some things in it that, that may, in fact, benefit us in the long run. It, it remains to be seen. Um, you know, what, 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 they, what it's done is it raised from... In NAFTA, 62% of a automobile, in order to be certified as under this agreement, had to be manufactured in North America. 
and it's it's been raised, it's raised to seventy five percent in this. Plus, it also requires a certain wage to be paid, which will have At pressure. At some point, it has to go up to fifteen dollars. It does one of two an things: hour. it puts pressure on Mexico to either but raise hold on, wages. But hold on, it's the average wage for the for the car yes, it's goes average. up to fifteen dollars an hour, which means that what gets paid in America is part of that average also, and so that artificially allows Mexico to keep their wages lower. Most people, they think raise gonna, them some. most people think it's going to put pressure on them to raise wages, Franklin. But here's the big part of this that you're glossing over. He got it done. You all said he wouldn't okay. get it done, couldn't get it done. Matter of fact, Canada blinked. Justin Trudeau asked for a meeting at the UN summit last week. <laughs> I think it's kind of funny. Trump refused a meeting with well, him. And then what happened? They gave in to our demands. Now, we, we balanced it out. I'm not saying it was a you know. Did a, we a give up something that he said was vital to us? You know, any negotiation no, I'm is just like asking that. you. Yes, we did. If you're looking at the agreement yes, we fairly, did. What's, the big, thing? Is, what's the big thing when we gave? Well, Frank, well, the big thing for us in Wisconsin and all is that we got access. No, and not a huge wasn't my amount. question. My question was, what's fair, the big thing we fair, gave up yeah. in it? Well, we're getting uh, freer markets now to deal with. I don't know, Frank. Uh, tell me, I haven't read a ton on it. What did we give up? Well, the big thing is that was one of Trump's big campaign things was that we gave up our sovereignty and allowed this independent group to decide these trade disputes. Uh, we we left that in. We left that in. We left that in. So I don't disagree that there are some improvements in the deal, and I congratulate him for getting that done. I think that's a good thing. It will strengthen the middle class. That's what Trump says. Well, I, well, he says a lot of things. What do you think it will or won't? Well, I, I don't know the answer to that. Do you know what sixteen dollars an hour is, Franklin, New Mexico? But it's not. It doesn't raise the wages to sixteen dollars an hour in Mexico. It's the average wage. Do you know what sixteen dollars an hour would be? It in would Mexico? be solidly middle three class. Three times, sure. three times their current wage. Sure. But it, it doesn't require it to be just raised there. It's an average, which means that. The vehicle, part of the wages being paid in Canada, part of the wages being paid in America, and part of the wages in Mexico. But Franklin, go it, into it that puts upward pressure on Mexican wages. Sure, no matter that how is much the whole you, theory behind the free trade agreement but to here, start with. Why does a company move a plant to Mexico in the first place? Because they keep like less low wages. So sure. if there's upward pressure sure. on the wages in Mexico, it makes it less. Uh, inviting to move a plant down there, especially because when you do that, you're getting a that, lower skilled. That, that's part employee. of the issue with free trade agreements in 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 general. And by the, the whole farmers, idea of the farmers were getting killed, and in the north, all farmers, uh, no. dairy farmers were getting killed, and a lot of farmers were because Canada was extremely restrictive on what we could import into Canada, and that it it helps those farmers a lot. The, the farmers they are pretty ha happy about this. They what could be imported. They were providing financial support they to their dairy industry, on, which, yes, made, which had, made their products cheaper. Right, now. but they right. also Im imposed tariffs on our dairy industries coming in, products coming in, and it's helped with that. By the way, Jared Kushner apparently was the real driving force behind getting this done. Yeah, you know, the guy they hate Kushner. and want to investigate. <laughs> Amazon, they raised their wages to. $15. Well, look, there's some there's some issues in the in the NAFTA thing that are the same type with this Amazon thing. You can cheer this, and and, and I, it's a it's a good thing. But the next time you order something on Amazon, you're going to pay more for well, it. Well, the car prices are probably going to go up because of these these things we're doing with NAFTA. Well, and you know, Amazon did this on their own. Nobody had to force it on them. So if a company wants to pay fifteen dollars an hour for I employees, agree. I agree. Let them do it. You know, <clears throat> I talked to several of my friends that have businesses right now, and the hardest thing they have is employees. They cannot. Well, that's employees. part of the pressure that Amazon was under because you can't get employees right now. They, I'm telling you, I've got friends. They just cannot find. Employees. Man, let me tell you they one say thing. The that, ones that you do find are just so sorry you, you don't even want well, them. Well, let me tell you one thing that it, it'll be interesting to see what. The, well, the, that's the, the theory, that's the theory, Steve. That uh, as the uh, employment uh, market tightens, that wages should be going well, up. Well, see, to, but, to but it, it, it doesn't work. It doesn't have. It, well, it Walmart doesn't, raised theirs. It does it from competitiveness, right? It without the government, without the well, government that, involved. That is what we should see. Well, no, wait a minute. I thought you wanted mandatory. 
$15 across the uh, board at McDonald's and everywhere. No, I, I never said that. Okay. I said, I said, I said, I said, I said, I said that the minimum wage should be raised. I thought going to fifteen dollars an hour all across the country would not work because it does not take into account the fact that there are vast differences in wages around the well, country. Well, the cities and the states that have done the fifteen dollars have seen huge losses in 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 labor and and business. The, the restaurant business in Seattle and in San Francisco has been decimated by the $15 wage. Restaurants can I don't think they can afford The point is Bezo, Bezos did this because he put together a model where he sees it working. And that's how capitalism works. But we have an entire culture that has been told capitalism is bad and the government needs to fix this. Well, when the government does it... Now, one of the things about Amazon, though, that, that is a negative, and it'll be interesting to see what the Democrats say about this, because it's sort of one of their traditional little things, the small guy competitor to Amazon is going to be really hurt by this, because he's going to lose employees to Amazon, and he doesn't have the economies of scale that Amazon has to be able to compete. So this is going to make it harder for the small companies trying to compete with Amazon. So, what do you think we ought to do? Well, this, that's kind of the way that's, the way the that's world kind of the way the economy works. Now, what will happen, see, the bad thing about that is John Stossel did a story on this. They come in and they look at these things at a moment in time. And, and what I just said, you'll find some companies that will say, we got squeezed out by this. But here's what will happen. Amazon, as big as it is, has a hard time handling niche markets. So somebody will come along, there'll be a group that can't find what they need with the big boys. And someone will say, we can fill that need. That's where you see in small town America. Uh, you see these shops, very specialized shops like doggy biscuit shops right. opening up. They find a, a niche that they can fill. That's like a good old dog biscuit. These, uh, of course, these pet lovers now. Well, that's a market. It is. I guess it is. Leashes, sweaters, whatever else. Anyway, I was, I was really shocked about Amazon raising that the fifteen dollars now. I mean, that's a they got a lot of employees, and that's a big hit to their bottom well, line. Plus, they were talking about how rich Amazon is. They've got so much money now. Well, Bezos is the richest man in the world, oh. as I understand it right now. Presently, yeah. Well, what else would you guys like to talk let me, about? Let me throw something out just for hypocrisy, okay? Saturday night, uh, they had a cold opening on Saturday Night Live. Matt Damon portrayed angry Brett Kavanaugh. And now, it's interesting because Saturday Night Live is getting criticized on all sides for this. The liberals are mad at him. I can't believe it. Because they think that, that it was, uh, they shouldn't have been making fun of it in the first place. But he did angry Judge Kavanaugh, okay? So, um, last year in December when the Harvey Weinstein thing blew up, which by the way, the hypocrisy just of that alone since he's a partner with Harvey Weinstein and there's absolutely no way in the world he didn't know, he and Ben Affleck, what Harvey Weinstein was like and doing and never stepped right. forward, never did anything about it. So he was a little on the defensive and then he gave an interview where he said some things that the Me Too movement didn't really like. But let me read you a quote from uh, an article where they asked him about being accused. This is Matt Damon directly. If you make the same claim to me today, it would be scorched earth. I don't care if it costs me $10 million in court for 10 years. You are not taking my name from me. You are not taking my name and reputation from me. I've worked too hard for it. I've earned it. You just can't blow me up like that. Does that sound like an angry person? The man had the gall to say Kavanaugh was too angry when he basically said, you say it about me, and I'm going to go scorched earth on you. Frankly, does that strike you as a little hypocritical on that? Let, let, me, let, me, let me add to that. Hillary is coming out right now. That's and, rich. And she's laughing about the way Kavanaugh acted. And she talked about her being uh, uh, interrogated by the U.S. Senate. And she didn't lash out at them. It, it's just amazing. No, no, her hypocrisy is that her husband was one of the worst serial sex abusers we've ever had in government, and she ran the operation to literally destroy any woman that he had victimized. 
Juanita Broderick wants to know when she gets her FBI investigation. And by the way, Minnesota, they've now concluded their investigation into um, the vice chairman of the Democratic Party, Keith Ellison. This is really rich. Now, this is from their conclusion. An allegation standing alone is not necessarily sufficient to conclude that conduct occurred. Really, Franklin? Here's what here, 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 investigated here, here, your vice chairman, all, here, and they don't take the woman's word for it? Here's what I can say about that, and I have no idea whether he did it or not, and if he did it, he should be punished to the fullest extent of the law. He's still your vice okay. chairman. Here's what I can say about that. I do know this. The lady who made the allegation claimed that she had a, mm -hmm. a recording, a video, but she has refused to produce right. it. But she did produce... Know. She no, did I'm produce not, doctor's I, records I'm, I'm not, in the moment. I'm not disagreeing with you that, but that's a very specific thing that ought to be so easily verifiable. But Franklin, you either got it or you don't. Yeah, if she turned simply, it over to the authorities, but Franklin, if she had simply made the allegation and 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 that was all she said, but she provided doctor's records that corroborate her allegation. So You're Miss Ford. No, she didn't. Yeah, she, she, Franklin, she prevent. Pre she gave doctor's records where she went to the doctor, the physical, the MD, not a psychologist, at the time that she is actually was beaten up by him, not 36 years later. I'm not arguing against the What lady. I'm telling you is your I party. I'm simply saying, first of all, if he's guilty... I'm fine with you. An allegation standing him. alone Number is two. not necessarily Number sufficient. Two. Well, that's true. It that's wasn't what, true you know, for Brett Kavanaugh. You know, hold on, hold on, hold on. It wasn't true hold on, hold on, for Brett Kavanaugh. Dr. Ford said yesterday, just yesterday, I asked for the FBI to investigate me. And I haven't been contacted really? by them this well, week. Well, Franklin, she also, she also refused to turn over the entire notes from the, the psychologist. Why is that? Yeah. She I refused to give them to them. I just said they have this woman gave this her a full doctor's not? report, and your people said. And this an woman said. Alone. And this woman said she has a recording verifying what well, happened. Turn it over. She's already given her well, doctors. No, the, here's the Franklin, point. The here's hypocrisy the point. is right here's the here. Point. No, it's not yes, hypocrisy. Yes, it is. It's, it's not, horrible hypocrisy. It's not for you to say if there's a objective piece of evidence that would end the debate. Why not turn it over Franklin, and let's do it? Franklin, the investigation for the Minnesota Democratic Party? I actually don't know. Uh, the lawyer is Elistad. Do you know who she's partners with? Her partner is the lawyer for the Democrat Farmer Labor Party that has endorsed Keith Elistad. Okay. She is the partner of the party's first of, first lawyer. First of all, John, the party's investigation is irrelevant to me. Let the authorities investigate it. That's what I'd say. Well... I guess you'd have to find some Republican authorities why, why in Minnesota. Did, uh, why did they sit on this information about Kavanaugh so long and not go ahead and do the investigation? Why do you think that, Franklin? Uh, when I, they first I, got I, information, I, said, and why didn't they share it with the other Republican party? As I said, party? I think that that was a mistake. It's not a mistake. No, it was no, a no. strategy. Said, it was a strategy. I yeah. said in here that I think that that's fair criticism. So it, okay? I don't disagree with you on that. Did, did, did the way it was handled by uh, Diane Feinstein end up making Dr. Ford a victim? Yes. Oh, I think you was can she make a that victim argument. of the process? I think you can make that argument. Well, that's sure. that's on you but all. None of that has, that blood but none of that has anything. anything to do with whether it happened or not. Wait that's what she was Wait a minute, wait a minute. This investigation would have been over with, and it would have been done already months ago. I so. just said I agreed with you on that. So point. your party Why was you more interested with me about that? because your party was more interested I agree in destroying with you on that this man. Point. That's all this was about. Is well, destroying. It, it, just say that they held it to destroy, tried to destroy this man. That's what they tried to do, Frank. And when you started yelling earlier about how no, clean cut he was, you thing. you give away your prejudice. Oh no, that's not true at all, John. Absolutely true. Don't you don't think they held it to try to. Try to, to Franklin, hold this I don't think confirmation was truthful in her testimony. You think they the held to way. try to hold this confirmation back? Oh, maybe somebody did. Although they're I, on the record. Uh, although, although somebody the, did. There was an. We email. know who did. There's a. There's a. Did we? There's yeah. a congressional the, candidate. The lady that hey. held on to the information. 
Congratulations. There's a congressional candidate out in California that a woman accused of actually threatening her that he, he actually what he said was, I will give you X amount of money for your campaign. She was running for a lower office if you sleep with me. She filed a complaint against him. Then he met privately with her, and she came out and said, oh, well, I've decided to withdraw my campaign or my, my criticism. It was a misunderstanding. Now, if a Republican had met privately with an accuser, and, and basically, I don't know whether he threatened her, I don't know whether he offered her the money, the press would eat us alive. And, 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 and you know, that's part of the criticism of, of Judge Kavanaugh this week that's come out. That, he that mean. That it, this fair criticism of him. Of what? Well, he testified clearly uh, that he didn't know anything about this second allegation till it came That's out not in this. True either. He, what he knew was here's now, the what problem. He said in words, his testimony is that he found out about it when it went public. But but the problem is a yeah, the text messages really aren't from Judge Kavanaugh. B the, what they did know, Franklin, is she was calling f f other classmates and shopping it to see if they would help her. Did There's no way in the world some of those classmates wouldn't have contacted him. He didn't know the specific These allegation. Are some of his support. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me say this. We've had people come from and talk about they went to school with him too, mm -hmm. and that they've had. Liberal reporters calling every person that ever went to school with them. Sure They've been doing it for months. Way, the yearbook that. stuff. Jonathan Turley, law professor at, at, at uh, GW, said last night. He said when he watched that questioning, it was clear to him it was a perjury trap. He said when you go that to that level and you're asking from 35 years ago a high school yearbook to define very subjective terms, he said you are laying a trap for perjury. Subjective. All right, we've got to go, but first of all, I want to ask you, will Kavanaugh be appointed? I think he will. Corker, to his credit, this week, yesterday, said he thought he would be confirmed. What about you, Brenda? I, I, I don't know, first of all, because I don't know what the FBI will report. I think unless they find some significant... Well, I mean, that's always that caveat. Well, They're not unless they find that. some significant... What about Blakey Blake? What's he going to do? Don't know. It's not probably not going to matter. Manchin is probably going to vote for him. McCaskill has announced she's not, and she plunged nine points behind in her poll. Good. Now, then, one more thing before we leave. Today, I think it was at 218, your cell phones are going to sound off. This is the first time ever they've done one of these... Uh, Emergency emergency yes. test for a cell phone, mm -hmm. and it's, this is the first one that's supposed to happen. I think at two eighteen p.m. today, nationwide. Mm -hmm. Now that you will not be able to uh, turn this off or whatever, except to turn your phone off is the only way. Yeah. That you so can if you're in it. a funeral, be aware. Of that's that. right. So if you need if you need your phone to be silented during this turn time, it off. You better turn it off. That's right. This is a first, and you heard it right here. Bye bye. You've been listening to Backfire with Steve Hickson, John Stanley.